Hey, what's happening guys? Mark back here on Mark's Aquatics. We're in the workshop today and I'm going to be teaching you guys if you're interested to learn about bristlenose flecos because we've got a couple in here. We've got a male and a female and um, I'm breeding them at the moment. Now they've had eggs for the last, I would say, few days now um, and they've all a little hatched. We've got a lot of little wrigglers in the back of the terracotta cave now which is exciting stuff and um, so I'm just going to take you guys through a little setup on what I've got here I've got about a 10 15 gallon tank here it's quite deep um, it's the one we made so what I made for uh, quite a while back now I made it originally for shrimps but things change and I've built a few things since then so I thought I would um, I would breed some plecos in here, and I've always fancied having to go breeding plecos. These guys are pretty easy to breed. Um, like I said, you just need the, the the right things, the right conditions, and they're going to breed quite easily for you. Now, obviously, you're going to need a pair. Now, the males have got these big protruding little antlers and things coming off of their face, and uh, they're very very easy to recognise. And the females. I've got very very future reference now the female is on the back of the log she's just under under there you can just see her fins and the male is in there with lots of little wriggling babies and um, we'll get in there with a torch and I'll show you those in a while but I just thought I'd just take you through what they need now they can be known to rasp away a little bit on the plants but I've got some Amazon swords in there and some heavier plants and they're not really going to eat those unless they're decaying and then they'll eat the decaying bits off of the leaves. They normally tend to leave them alone. Brilliant for a community tank. They're one of the best, and I mean the best algae scrapers and scrubbers that you're going to get. They will take every little piece off the glass and, um, and keep your tank spotless on the inside. And once they get to work, there's no stopping them. They'll take all that biofilm off of your bogwood and the hides on the substrate, plant leaves, anything you can think of super efficient at uh, taking algae but they do need um, supplementary feeding on things like zucchini cucumber mushrooms you can feed them stuff along those lines and um, pretty you know spirulina tablet little uh, tablets that you feed your, you know the other fish as well they're really good for them for a supplementary feed as well 30 gallon tanks probably pretty good for them as well You've, like I said this is a little breeding tank and it's only going to be these in here until the babies come out and then we're going to move them move them out into other tanks which I've set up right now these little fish are pretty pretty resilient to be honest to a wider range of, uh, of parameters I mean they're going to put up with uh, different temperatures from about 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit in a pH range of about 5.5 to 7.6 they're really hardy little guys they really are and um, obviously you keep them in a really well maintained regular water change tank and they could live up to 20 years and that's a really good uh, really good age for a fish to get it's 20 years old so it just shows you how long you could have them for if you look after them right guys temperature of the breeding tank is I'll just slide my laser pointer in there into view there you go we're 24.6 degrees centigrade there so um, that's what these are breeding at and we've got a lovely little uh, clutch of babies there which have hatched out I'm not sure if you can see just I'll just use my tongue to keep my fingers out of the way but if you look down in the corner there I'll show you again there's some empty egg cases there where they've where they've broken through and uh, and released themselves to their little wrigglers in their little wriggling stage which is uh, always funny to see Right, getting into the breeding side of these things now, obviously you're going to need caves because they like to go and hide in caves and um, we've got two there. Now I've got a nice piece of arch shaped bark which I found off a nice oak tree and I've had that for quite a long time and I've just kept that in my bucket of little bits of wood and I put that in there, soaked it with boiling water first for about 10-15 minutes, re the kettle, put the boiling water in again and when you do that you'll see you'll see it'll, all the oxygen will be fizzing out of the edges and the ends where it's, that heat will force the air out and allow it to sink um, which is what it's done and I just put a nice piece of wood on there as well just to hold it down because it was very very ever so buoyant but that held it down for the, la for the last few days and it's been fine and the terracotta ones next to it which, you, which I've bought 
I was going to make some. Now, making them is a bit of a, there's a bit of an issue on that. You get plenty of these polymer clays around these days, and I've heard of people making them and not having and their water quality going down because these things are mixed with oils um, to make them pliable. And these are the, this is the stuff that you don't put in a kiln to dry. Now this was kiln fired, um, so that's fine to put those in the tank because there's nothing in there. Terracotta is completely inert and safe to put in your tank, like flower pots, all that kind of stuff. It's very, very safe to put in your tanks. But with these other bake, oven bake ones, you're going to get a lot of oils and different chemicals they put in there to keep it soft, to make it pliable, and then you put that in the oven. Now a lot of that does burn off. But how much of it really burns off, we don't know. So it's completely trial and error. If you wanted to make one, you could do. But I, I would suggest uh, soaking it or pre-soaking it in hot water after you've done it maybe a good few times or a good few weeks, maybe to a month. Let anything leach out that's going to leach out. And, um, and make sure you're not going to poison your fish in any way. So that's another... I was going to make one, but I, was, I don't know. I thought against it in the end. There's plenty of things you can make. I prefer to make them out of slate. I'm going to make a video on how to make a, a slate hide out of some lovely 7mm Welsh slate that I've got. And I'll do that with my tile saw. Um, and I'll show you how to make one of those in one of the other videos that I'm going to do. Because we're going to get more colonies of plex in the other room as well. In the little shrimp room if you're familiar with the channel. You'll know what I'm talking about. And if you don't know what I'm talking about guys hit that subscribe button and the notification bell and then you'll uh, follow along with the videos and you won't miss anything and you can look back at all the other videos that I've done I think it's about 250 odd videos on there on various topics that you can go back and have a look at so feel free to do that if you like the videos yes yeah, so bogwood's very important for bristle nose they like to graze on the wood it aids in their digestion now another thing with these guys is you need very very good filtration now I've got a built in filtration system in this tank which is at the back which is a triple filter which is running through some um, some media at the back there some uh, bio home ultimate which I put in the back brilliant stuff and um, that's got a lovely colony of bacteria in there now aerobic bacteria anaerobic bacteria both the sides are being covered zero nitrates zero uh, nitrate phosphate ammonias everything zero absolutely pristine water conditions now after a couple of months first thing is about three months it's been going for now so so quite quite good you won't better that now for water it's called a complete cycle it's gone all the way through and everything's happy now so you keep the regular water changes going you can use sponge filters with these if you're just keeping a small amount of fish if you're just keeping two like I'm keeping here and the babies then you're going to be okay for a certain period of time while the babies are young but as they get older, obviously, the more waste is going to be produced. And they do produce a lot of waste, plecos. They've got a very, very long intestinal stomach tract. And it's basically coming out on just 24-7. It's little machines. And they go along hoovering everything. They're like little Dyson vacuum cleaners, they are. Going around and picking everything up. But then again, a lot of waste. So if you've got a community tank and you want to breed them in a community tank, I suggest a canister filter. I'd load that up as well with some of that Bio Home Ultimate or or the gravel. Richard from Ponga who's doing an amazing little sequence at the moment of videos on how to um, soup up filters with the media that he's selling and it's really is amazing stuff. He's kind enough to send me some and I got it um, today. I'll just go and grab you some so you can have a look. I'm back. Now that is the Bio Home Ultimate monstrous surface area on there really really good stuff and it also comes in this size as well which is the uh, bio home gravel so you've got two different sizes there i know he does another couple of sizes as well he's very he's been so good to my channel and i can't thank him enough and i always like to plug his channel just as a little thank you that's his card there if you want to stop and view that there's all his information on there if you want to buy some of this media and soup up your filter okay and obviously these little bags as well which he sent me to put the media in which you can put inside canister filters pop across to his channel pond guru and he shows you how to soup up various filters people are sending him filters and he's souping them up and sending them back 
free of charge. So he's uh, he's being good as gold to all us activists out there, really helping us out. So go and help him out and buy some of his media off him and uh, and help him out as well. I'm sure you'll appreciate that. But you won't beat this stuff for a filter. You're going to get a complete cycle and it's going to be all the better. You're going to be breeding so much better. Everything's going to be pristine water, quality of the fish. Everything will really, really stand out. It really will. That full cycle is what you're looking for. You can see her now. She's just come out there, look, facing the other way. So that's where I'm going at with the filtration, guys. It has to be absolutely perfect. And I have just seen a tiny, tiny little shrimp in this tank. And I don't know where it's come from. And I don't know if you can, if you guys can see it. I think it might be a little bit higher. Where are you? He is small. I don't think you'll see him actually. But he's on one of these little leaves up here somewhere. It looks like a tiny, tiny little cherry shrimp. And I haven't got a clue how that, how that got in there. Because I got these plants from the shop. Maybe it came in on the plants. I am not sure. But anyway, we got a baby shrimp in there. It just, uh, just took me uh, by surprise, that did. So, guys, yes, the filter systems are all up and running. That's what you need. You need really good filtration. Community tank, a lot of fish, a lot of bio load. So you need a bigger, healthier system and filtration to take care of all that if you're going to breed successfully. That's the way I would go about this. Now then, food-wise, if you want them to breed, you're going to have to feed them nice, rich foods like bloodworm okay you've got to condition them up first now when you get them obviously you get the male and the female which is paramount and then what you do is you start feeding them bloodworms and things like daphnia stuff of that nature some live food which is going to then encourage them to put a bit of weight on and um, and get conditioned to breed and that's what you want. You don't want them going off like half cocked and breeding because you're not going to get a big clutch of eggs. You're going to get minimal eggs then because they weren't really ready to spawn. So this way you've got your caves. The male will guard the entrance of his cave. You can see his little tail in there and he's waggling that around and he's thinning that that water out of that hide. So he's continuously recircling that, that water in there. So uh, he's keeping those little babies safe. Um, now then, what will happen is, when they get up to breeding condition, the male will start loitering around the end of his, the edge of his cave, right here, wagging his tail around, displaying away to the female. Now what he'll do is, he's then going to entice her to go into the cave. He will then follow in behind her and trap her in the cave. This is our Pleco's roll. Go in in there. He'll trap her in there. Now what she'll do then, up on the roof of the cave then, she will deposit the eggs, okay? And it'll be a clutch of, I don't know, it can be up to a hundred eggs, a big, big cluster of eggs up on the roof there. He will then kick her out after she's done that. He'll go in then, he will fertilise the eggs, make sure everything's up to speed now he likes it and everything's arranged perfectly. And that's, that's it then for the next few days. Um, Keep your eye on the, on the eggs, make sure they're, um, they're always healthy. Now and again, just shine a little torch in there and make sure he's fanning away and they're not going mouldy or anything like that and he's looking after them. They're pretty good at doing this. And, um, yeah, it'll be around 10 days, guys, that it'll take for them to hatch. And then when they do, now if you're doing this in a community tank, you've got to be super careful because other fish love to eat other fish and they are tiny so if they start wandering out of the cave around the substrate they're going to get picked off by the other fish in the community tank so it's not a good idea to um unless you've got a lot of cover in there or a nice big log that they can go in and hide away and obviously it depends on the fish you're keeping as well you can just see a bit of a case there getting wafted out he's wafting that egg those egg cases out look that's a nice little view of him doing some work as they're hatching, they're hatching as we speak. Um, I came in the workshop before and I thought I was going to do the video and show you the eggs. And I thought it was going to be a few more days, to be honest, before they hatched. But they've hatched early, or maybe he had them in there and I just didn't see them. And he was hiding them under himself. 
and I didn't see them earlier on. But like I just said guys, they're going to get picked off quite easily, so it's very important that you watch what you keep in the tanks with them, okay? Because they're going to get picked off very quickly, like I said. These little guys are pretty active. As soon as they come out that pot, they'll stay in there for a given time. As they grow, they're going to start coming out and going onto the substrate looking for food. When they do, you can start giving them crushed up flake algae wafers, uh, little bits of blood worm. You can get their infusoria. They're going to live off that, which is micro life in the tank. They're going to be eating that as well. Walter worms, which I made a video about, I think it was my last video or maybe the one before. Um, are fantastic and I've got a culture of those on the workshop just over here which I'll put in front of the screen now if you can see all those little water worms all over the glass now as soon as these little guys come out I'll be taking some of them off with a cotton bud shaking that in the water after I've washed it out washed all the dirt off and putting some in there and those little froils actively hunt those down and suck them out from in between the substrate and put on some weight nicely that way she's working away on the glass now as you can see and he's busy tending for the brood it's very very interesting time and it's lovely to see these little wrigglers and as with all plecos guys don't forget their bottom feeding fish they're going to suck the algae off the glass and the biofilm from the glass but when they go down, especially the young and the fry, they're going to feed off of that substrate. They're going to clean that little bit of biofilm off all around that wood. They'll be in amongst all that, which you'll see if you uh, if you follow along because this is going to be a stage transitional video on w watching them grow up. So you can watch them and follow along and see them grow up. But they need the spirulina tablets. They're going to need all that really good nutrition to... Um, to make it through that adolescent stage and um, Daphnia, bloodworms, blackworms, all these kinds of things you can feed to them as they get a little bit older you can even feed them um, broccoli, lettuce stuff like that, you can blanch it and put it in there, deshelled peas are really good as well, spinach it's endless, any of the green foods blanched and put in they'll red they'll readily take that any day of the week and thrive on it so it's, it's always best to mix up that food to give them the optimum health that they need now if you're trying to spawn your little bristle noses and you've got a nice pair and they're a good few months old and they've got a bit of size to them and you're not having any luck one trick which you can do is do a 50% water change okay or let that level of the tank slowly evaporate away that means your TDS is going to go up your total dissolved solids is going to go up slightly as that water evaporates away minerals actually stay behind it's like salt in the sea if you left a cup of salt water out in in the open air and the sun on it that water will evaporate and then when that water's all gone you'll get a lovely little crystals all them salt crystals will be left baked dry like you see on these salt flats which were ancient seas so that's a really good um, way of doing that is lower lower that water let it go down let that TDS rise up those minerals get more concentrated in the water and then leave that for a few days now that what happens is then that then mimics a dry spell okay like it would do in nature you get a lovely dry spell and um, you leave it then for a few days. You've got to be patient. This is only these things go pretty easily, but it's as if you're having trouble. And then what you do is you pour in some cold water and fill it back up again, another 25%. Not freezing, freezing water, but you know, just tepid water. Just just put it in, and then that will then reactivate those fish to breed because they all of a sudden they think it's it's raining. Here comes the rainy season. The rivers are flooding and that level goes up they get that water depth pressure again they get that cold water coming in like it's just coming off the mountains and streams wherever they are and it chills that water down and that will encourage them to spawn so you've got a really good way of doing that i'm doing that with my zebra plecos at the moment giving them 50 percent water changes cold water changes so 
it's really trying to spur them on. They're very notorious to breed. The ones I've got are around three inches now, so they're, they're a good size to breed. I'm going to do a video on them shortly. They're in the cave at the moment, the same as cave as you're looking at there, the terracotta one. And they've been in there now for about three days. So I've kept the torch out, but I'm really fingers crossed that we're going to get some uh, babies because I've, I've been dying to breed them ever since I was a kid and um, managed to get four, three males and one female. So she can happily zip between the pots and deposit some eggs in each one because the males, as I just said, look after the babies. So it's exciting stuff. So maybe one of the videos we're going to get some really good news and I'm going to say we've done it. We've, uh, we've got some babies on the way, which will be absolutely fabulous. But like I said, that will encourage, if you're having a hard time, that's going to encourage your uh, your plecos to breed. That goes for all plecos, really. They're um, they're very, very uh, susceptible to that, that rainstorm effect, that downpour torrent. And uh, that'll really give them, that'll pick them in. Especially if you've got loaded them before with all these nice foods and they've put some weight on. You'll end up with a really good spawn and a load of healthy fry. Okay, guys, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my torch and we're going to have a little peek inside. I'm going to try and zoom up first. Try and get down a bit further and then put the torch in from underneath. Don't want to keep it on there too long but then we can go in and we can have a look, okay? And there should be a lot of little wrigglers up on the roof if you have a look. And there you go, you can see them, you can see the male there, thinning away. There you go, oh. You can see them all wriggling away there, absolutely fantastic. There they are. There's a little bit a better shot for you. I'm just trying to angle the torch away. So um, oh, and there's Mum on top of the pot. There you go, there's about the best view I'm going to get. You can see them all, there's a few eggs there and there's a quite a few that have hatched out. The little yellow guys at the back with their little yolk sacks. So I'm going to give them a break now and um, turn this torch off. But there you go, so there's the, there's the end result guys. There's the little babies, they're all hatched. I'm just going to set you up again, sorry for all this racing around. There's mum back on the top of her pot. So within, I reckon, another another five or six days, maybe a week, we should have a lot of little babies hopefully swimming around and we can uh, we can do another little checkup on them. So we're going to call this Breeding Project Part 1, so there'll be a Part 2 on the way. Anyway guys, I hope you liked this little video. I hope it was informative for you. If you did like it, give it a thumbs up and... Um, Chuck any comments at me you like. I always answer people that send me questions. And if I do forget anyone, send it to me again. Because as the channel is growing, obviously, I'm getting a lot more messages. And we're trying to do everything at once. I do like to try and get to all of you. I don't like to let anybody down. So keep at me if I forget. Anyway, guys, I hope you liked it. And anyway, as all star yeah, you're all stars. You know that. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching Mark's Aquatics. I thoroughly love making these videos. Passionate about this hobby. Always have been ever since I was a kid, and if I can encourage any of you guys out there to, to do some, uh, to do a bit of uh, aquarium DIY and different things like that, pop back and have a look at my other videos. There's loads of stuff on there that you can follow along and copy and save yourself a few quid. 
and enjoy it along the way. Anyway, guys, as always, you're all stars. Look after yourselves. Take care, and I'll see you on the next edition of Marks Aquatics. Take care. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar.